Hey guys, this is Obradowski of WeAreChange.org here with pretty much nothing on my notepad because in today's video we are going to be doing a video specifically about all the important news that happened this week from of course an anti-establishment point of view. Uh, what the hell? Really happened style video that we haven't done in a while and if there's ever a time to ask what in the hell is going on it is definitely this week which has been jam-packed with a lot of important news and we're doing all of this for free for you because you crazy son of a guns decide to wear some of our t-shirts and hats out in public which probably creates a very interesting time for you especially if, if you know you if you purchase a, a, one of our make taxation <laughs> theft again hats and, and wear that out in public or a, a, a cnn <laughs> it's it's fake new t-shirts whatever it is thank you you crazy son of a guns for purchasing merchandise to allow this independent media organization to be free not only in the videos we provide but also the opinions and reporting that we could do it's only possible because of you and that's why thank you sincerely and to start off the news today i first off wanted to shout out the legend of the week a category that i just specifically made up right now because uh why not specifically highlighting a former Navy SEAL and military dog trainer, Mike Ritland, who went on Fox News recently and said this. Absolutely. If, if I could, could I throw a PSA out real quick? Real quick. Uh, just the, the remarkable nature of these dogs and, and them being highlighted in the news creates a, a huge demand by people that, that frankly shouldn't have them. If, uh, if you see the, the coverage and you decide I want one of these dogs, either buy a finished, trained, uh, you know, fully trained and, and finished dog from a professional uh, or just, just don't get one at all. Um, and Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. Mike? Maybe more on that one. <laughs> of course, bringing joy to people far and wide with just a simple statement with, with, with such power and authority that now close to 8 million people viewed after just happening hours ago. A truly fascinating look into viral culture, specifically around an issue that is very important and uh, overall the mainstream media has not been treating as important. Also in related Epstein news, this week also a video came out showing two crazy badass reporters stor stor st storming Jeffrey Epstein's island and, and reporting what they saw surprisingly getting coverage on the top of the Daily Mail the Drudge Report New York Post and many other publications even as many people reported finding it extremely difficult to find the video on YouTube of the you know very well edited and eye-opening thought-provoking <laughs> little short documentary that was released which for some reason uh, only has uh, 450,000 views uh, even though it's been mentioned by almost uh, every media publication out there a little strange uh, that's a little strange don't you think and, and okay stepping away from the facetiousness uh, it's also important to note that I was in talks with many uh, big news outlets that were supposed to play videos of this clip that were supposed to interview me and uh, a lot of them just suddenly canceled and dropped out of our arrangements which I believe is also something worth noting but also regarding Epstein news there was a very famous pathologist that came out and questioned the official version of events that we actually did a full breakdown on this YouTube channel about but also this week we learned that Giselyn Maxwell, the alleged pimp working for Epstein, who is accused of grooming a lot of the children for Epstein, that this person, uh, who by the way, uh, currently, as of public knowledge, is not being investigated at all, well, it came out that this person actually attended a secretive retreat with the likes of other, quote, luminaries like Jeff Bezos, of Amazon, one of the world's most powerful people. And when you look at the close circle that these pedophile billionaires hang out with, it is the most powerful people in this world, including what other technocrats like Bill Gates, but their tentacles 
are running far and deeper than of course the public has previously known and there does need to be some serious investigations and questions amongst many of these powerful individuals and their associations with pedophiles all of this as these very powerful people are buying the best pr in the industry and openly staging psyopses as Gislin maxwell literally had paid advertisements in a staged photo op of her reading a book about cia assassinations while of course another close associate of epstein prince andrew royalty from the united kingdom is trying to play it off like him and epstein were allegedly fighting each other and that photos of them together was somehow staged which evidence is coming out showing that this of course is just more of a distraction in a desperate attempt for this supposed british royalty to distance himself from the pedophile which he was hanging out with when he was still a convicted pedophile so yeah obviously the story only gets stranger as more and more facts come out of the woodwork and we have to discern what is actually truth and what is disinformation meant of course to confuse you but one thing that's not confusing about this case is that of course um and epstein didn't kill himself <laughs> okay thank you for that commentary now also before we move on to the next article by the way i just posted on my twitter account twitter.com forward slash luke we change suggestions for our next video report on the ground please feel free to vote right now giving me your suggestions on what you want to see from us only with your suggestions tips and help are we able to do the news reports that we do including the one that of course we just did on jeffrey epstein's island and now in other crazy things happening in the world saudi arabia just formally began an initial public offering an ipo on its national oil firm now this of course will have a very big great geopolitical ramifications as of course saudi arabia is trying to do everything it can to keep and regain its significance in the region after facing a very harsh future especially when it comes to saudi arabia's access to natural resources other than oil and also specifically fresh drinking water of course we have been covering and will continue to cover on this youtube channel all of this as u.s troops are continuing to move out of syria and its northern region where they have set up many bases repositioning themselves along syrian oil which Donald Trump is suggesting that the troops are there in order to make a deal for Exxon Mobil. And and you know what's the word when you when you take something that's uh, not yours? Uh, gee, gee, I'm having a hard time here. I'm having a hard time. Maybe maybe you guys can help me. What's the word here when you know you, you just take something? But yeah, images like, like this, iconic images of U.S. military vehicles with U.S. flags draped on them, protecting oil fields or, or, or popping up all over the media with absolutely no surprise to me or, or anyone else with a, a single brain cell. Because this is the ultimate reality of, of what many of these conflicts, of course, they're far more sophisticated. There's far more involved than just natural resources, but this is one element out of many why allegedly people are fighting for democracy and and freedom which, which again you're not really they're not really no. but as that happens there is some other developments in the region specifically showing how the united states is less entangled in the region and turkey and russia are dealing with the situation on the ground doing their best to avoid a conflict that may break out between Turkey and Syria, as of course the Kurds that were once aligned with the United States have made headway with aligning themselves with Syrian forces. But now with Russia being stuck in the middle, the US is less entangled in this entire mess, which is creating a lot of havoc, but eventually, according to my opinion, lead towards a bigger resolution that will work out for the benefit of everyone 
in the region. And all of this is happening on the backdrop that the United States finally killed their number one employee, I mean, excuse me, the, the number one terrorist in the region, al-Baghdadi, which, uh, by the way, uh, according to information from the U.S. military, the Russian military, the Syrian military, the Iranian military, the Syrian human rights organization, and now, according to the Pentagon, uh, is some kind of proverbial cat with nine, nine lives that just keeps dying and reviving, since, of course, he has been pronounced and announced dead many, many times, which I have called out specifically many, many times, and also the greater fact that this boogeyman wouldn't exist if it wasn't for American foreign policy directly shipping in arms and intelligence and money into that region to get rid of Bashar al-Assad, which prompted up, of course, radical Islamists in the region and, of course, empowered people like al-Baghdadi. But that's a whole other discussion that we should have. But there's a number of reasons to not trust the official declaration of al-Baghdadi being assassinated because, ultimately, uh, the U.S. Pentagon, the U.S. war machine, the military-industrial complex, along with its media whores, lies to you about war, about conflict, just like they have because it is a racket. It is a way to make an absurd amount of money. It is a way to push an old establishment guard, neoconservative way of thinking that is destructive to everyone except the very few. As we note, the, the countless numbers of lives lost and trillions of dollars spent on an absolutely idiotic ideology and this is why when donald trump is finally moving troops away from one specific region that there is such criticisms even even though he directly puts it on an oil field and it's not a pullout like he says it's a pullout but it regard it regardless of that we have to understand that the mess that the united states creates all over the world is a mess created on false justifications, a mess created by lies that are, that are puppeteered by the mainstream media that should not be believed and should always be questioned. And now, shifting focuses from foreign policy to domestic policy, we have new videos emerging of a brawl that happened in a New York City subway after two videos now are coming out of conflicts between the NYPD started a crackdown on fair evaders and other quote illegal actions that are happening in the city. This of course causing a mass protest of around a thousand people that with the support of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez now, support the issue of fair jumping accumulating of course in a protest that saw hundreds of people jump the new york city subway turnstile in brooklyn just this friday night being of course a direct response to the governor of new york de declaring a crackdown <laughs> issuing a special law enforcement unit unit of 500 cops to go after the very serious crime of of fair evasion and again a lot of this is happening because as i explained in yesterday's video the city is absolutely going bankrupt is cash strapped for its just absolutely idiotic policies that propped up the bureaucratic corruption that exists within the mta and the city's way to to generate more revenue for itself is is of course to to, to police people who decide to swipe someone in uh in, in new york city you have a metro card and the nypd literally has undercover officers that they pretend to be either helpless women or, or homeless people standing by the turnstiles asking if someone could swipe them in if you do swipe them in with either an unlimited card, a bunch of cops come up and you are very heavily ticketed and fined for the crime of helping out your fellow man, which the city is declaring an entire crackdown under. And then people are surprised why there is a lack of respect for the revenue generators of the city that are becoming more egregious, 
more money hungry than ever because of the cash strapped state that is spending money like lunatics on insane stupid ideas trust me as, as a person who has grew up in brooklyn i have seen cops giving out tickets for the most ridiculous stupid asinine freaking reasons riding a bike even slowly after just riding in in the bike lane on the sidewalk will give you a ticket running too fast in the new york city subway will get you a ticket having a coffee on the new york subway system will get you a ticket my friend just literally twirled around one of those things just for fun just because he was bored got a ticket and the tickets are going to be increasing as the state becomes more bankrupt which it is and all of this crescendoed to of course donald trump announcing that he is officially moving from new york city to of course florida mainly because of of just the high insane amount of taxes here many other political reasons with the state trying to open up donald trump's previous tax records and this is why we fact checked donald trump's claims yesterday with all the evidence and personal experiences that i have in this particular city which you should definitely check out and to save you some time yeah it's an absolute uh, crazy crap hole that's only going to get more crazier which again goes along with my prediction for mass civil unrest in 2020 which uh is it's most definitely going to happen now in, in other uh news stories that you should probably know about that you might have not heard about in lebanon the prime minister resigned after nationwide protest showing a very important fact of this world that when people come together raise their voice together they can actually make a difference twitter also decided to ban political advertisements in a very big kind of pr kind of backward slap to facebook all of all of this is being done for bipartisan political reasons while of course no one's talking about the bigger giant youtube and google coca-cola was also named one of the world's worst polluting brands being of course responsible for also taking away a lot of water aquifers and access to water in many parts of the world while selling coca-cola back to the public at a cheaper rate than the water that they get access to. Barack Obama also challenged and called that woke culture, which was kind of interesting to see. And of course, I also just wanted to remind you that um, that and Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that comment. That's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's news broadcast. If you did, share it with your friends and family members because YouTube definitely will not. I appreciate all the support, all uh, the donations, whether through cryptocurrencies, PayPal, Subscribestar. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much for, for just simply just going to We Are Change dot org forward slash donate and checking out the many different ways even without money that you could be involved sustaining this independent media organization again without you we would not be here we need your help more than ever and it is greatly greatly appreciated that you give me this opportunity to spend this time with you i love you guys stay tuned for more here on we are change dot org